Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys DX Star Wars 1 6 scale figure unboxing and review. Hot Toys, you're spoiling me two DXs in one week. Yeah, I'm pretty darn hyped to get Luke out here. And of course, today we are taking a look at none other than Luke Skywalker himself from Mandalorian Season 2. Now, I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They do have installment plans and a reward system. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new review goes live on the channel. Now, the question I have going in and probably shared by some of you all out there in the audience as well is, is this the ultimate, the definitive, the one to have, the single best version of Luke Skywalker ever made by Hot Toys? And fingers crossed we will answer that question throughout the course of the video. Front and center, an image of Luke absolutely destroying a dark trooper. Then down below on the wraparound banner, Luke Skywalker deluxe version plus an image of the figure holding little baby Grogu. On the side of the box, absolutely no mercy for Dark Troopers. Luke with his swooshing lightsaber blade effect, and that destroyed Dark Trooper once again. Then on the back of the box, it's been pretty boring so far. DX, Luke Skywalker, the warnings and legal info, plus the rest of the wraparound banner with the little barcode. Third, if you're wondering, hey, just like Ahsoka, is there some artwork underneath the slipcover? Well... Yes, friend, yes there is, and this piece of artwork, I mean, I like it, but I don't think it's quite as good as the Ahsoka box art. I mean, we can see Luke kind of in the background, and this is supposed to be the Dark Trooper with sparks and bits and pieces going everywhere, but there is so much going on, it's kind of hard to decipher what's going on exactly in this particular scene. Then down below, Star Wars in metallic silver. I do at the very least absolutely love the black and white color scheme. On the side of the box, Luke Skywalker Deluxe version and this cardboard is super heavy duty. Then on the back of the box, all the warnings and legal info that technically we have already seen. Ahsoka did you say? Yes, I referenced Ahsoka, but how could I not? They're both DX figures and they're both from the Mandalorian, but the box art for Luke, it works in the exact same way. Gone are the flip open covers of DX figures of old, and nowadays we have slide out drawers, and I'm perfectly fine with that. It works a treat. Down below for Luke Skywalker, a read up, feel free to pause to read. Now, I've been really excited to get this Luke in hand. Some people, when this guy was announced, said, no, no, this one looks just like the CGI version of Luke. It doesn't look good enough to be the ultimate Luke in 1 6 scale. But first in hand impressions, I don't know, this guy he looks pretty darn awesome. What we are going to do now, though, is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Technically, though, I should have said almost everything he comes with, because his robe we will check out separately, and we'll do the same for his cardboard backdrop as well, because it's far too big to fit here. Now, he does come with the tried-and-true Star Wars Imperial-style flooring base, rectangular. Up top, we've got some sculpt details with some washers in the crevices, and this time, it's meant to be Moff Gideon's light cruiser. On the surface, some speckling of silver, and I really like that. It makes it look like metallic flooring. Around the front, Star Wars and Luke Skywalker etched into the nameplate. And up top, the crotch grabber. What's this? Another display base that's circular? Is this also for Luke? Is it for Grogu so he can be jumping in the air? No, of course not. It's for the Dark Trooper, so it can kind of be hovering. Now, the bottom is circular, but... I love the sculpt work because it matches the display base and so too do the paint applications. On the underside we have some foam pads, so fingers crossed, in the display it should be nice and grippy and planted. Then up top, a clear flight pole, which literally just pegs into the bottom of the Dark Trooper. What a segue. As you can see down below, a peg port. Now usually these pieces are just big hunks of vinyl and the sculpt work is pretty soft. Same thing can be said with this guy, although... There is a little bit of articulation. On the one side, this arm can move forward and back and in and out, and the head sculpt can move left and right and up and down, cheers to touch. We will be discussing the light-up effect, though, a little bit later on. Now, the sculpt work, pretty soft, but 
I guess it does look like force choked crumpled metal. There is some silver dry brushing on the surface, some oil stain washes in the crevices, and also some pitting over the top as well. I would have liked to have seen some superheated sections as though Luke has just slashed him, but I guess the light up effect kind of makes up for that. I'm fairly certain that this is the special edition bonus and I don't think Luke ever interacted with a hologram projector, but it's always nice to have one. Up top we have a miniature model of Moff Gideon's light cruiser done in blue translucent plastic, because you know, that's how holograms look in Star Wars. And down the bottom, the hologram projector we've seen a ton of times before. It's sculpted well. You also get this small accessory, and it's not meant to be held. It's meant to be used to use Luke's moving eyes. And you will see how his moving eyes work later on. You could potentially go so far as to say that this is a two-pack, because Hot Toys sure as heck did not with this set, but just recently with DX21 we had Ahsoka Tano and Grogu. It was billed as a proper two-pack. Now the Grogu that we got with DX21, well, look at that, we get it here with Mando Luke as well. He has a ball joint at the base of his neck for a little bit of articulation. You can also swivel both arms forward and back, and you can turn the hands. Plus, Grogu, he comes with his own little swap out hands, and they work as you'd expect. You pop the existing ones out, pop the new ones in. The sculpt for the robe is good, there's flow and movement to it. it Looks like fabric, although it's fully sculpted. Kind of wish it was fabric. For the fuzzy sections, I like the washers in the crevices, and over the top of the robe section, the lighter dry brushing looks good. There's some shading in his ears and his cheeks, and those glossy eyes, they look very lifelike. But up on top, no fuzzy hair, and what the hell is this? There is a huge seam, and I have no idea why, because it doesn't have moving eyes, doesn't have swap out ears. That seam really didn't need to be there. This could have absolutely been one solid piece. Now, there are some differences to the DX21 version, but comparisons, they come later. As for Luke's lightsaber hilt, we get two different versions. One that's permanently attached to this forearm, because... This is the light up one. Now, I would have hoped that Hot Toys would go with a USB powered saber because that's what they're doing nowadays, but they didn't. So you still have to futz around with the outfit, remove the forearm at this very hard to remove joint, and then plug the new one in blind. At the very least, though, you don't have to contend with the internal sleeve because it's a faux sleeve. It's already pre attached. Now, the hilt itself looks accurate, although the neck is slightly chonky, and as you can see, there's a switch. So when you flick the switch, there's a green LED on the inside. It is, of course, compatible with both different styles of blades for Luke's lightsaber. Then for the standalone hilt, the neck is a little bit skinnier, and it's painted beautifully. I have no complaints with the hilt. There's a D ring around the bottom, and yes, it is real metal, and the sculpt work is impeccable. We even have the teeny tiny green and red triangles, just like in the film. Now, you do have multiple different blades, like I just said, but why are they so desaturated? They're almost clear translucent plastic. Now, maybe the reason that they're desaturated is because Hot Toys want to rely on the LED to give us that green color, but don't do that, Hot Toys. Just make these in a super vibrant green. We've seen them do it before with the Return of the Jedi version, but this time, like I said, it's almost just translucent plastic with a very subtle green tint. He also comes with the swooshing lightsaber blade effect, and this one is a little bit more saturated towards the thinner end where he's swooshing, but still, Hot Toys, in the future, ratchet the saturation up. And lastly, a full array of hands, gloved for the right and ungloved for the left. Now, the gloves do extend down with a cuff, so the right ones are slightly longer, but the wrist peg does nestle all the way in there, so it's not like one hand is going to sit further out on the body than the other. The skin texture on these look good. There's wrinkling, there's vein work, and a little bit of rosy colored shading. Then for the gloves, Love the leather grain and, of course, the stitching as well. What we are going to do now, though, is get Luke himself out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box. No crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. And I'm going to need you to be honest with me just for a second. Yes, even you sitting there in the back, because I have something called Collector Brain. 
And I'm pretty sure you all do as well, but just want to run it by you. Now, is it just me or when we're sitting down and enjoying a show like The Mandalorian Season 2 and we're watching the finale and... Oh no, they didn't. Is that Luke Skywalker? Oh, it absolutely is. And he shows up and he wrecks shop and he kicks some serious butt. And yep, that is Luke Skywalker through and through. But the only thing that we can think is, oh, I need a figure of that. Because that's exactly what I was thinking. I was sitting there rubbing my hands together thinking, hot toys, you all better get to work. And luckily they did. So the question is, do you have that as well, or is it just me? Am I going crazy, or is Collector Brain a real thing? Now, Luke Skywalker himself standing there in front of me makes me so very happy. I'm a lifelong Star Wars fan, because luckily, A New Hope came out before I was born, so when I was growing up, I had access to Star Wars straight away from the get-go. So seeing Luke Skywalker back again, it meant a lot to me. And having this guy now immortalized in 1-6 scale... Oh, no question, this guy is absolutely getting a center spot in the Mandalorian display. Up close and personal, kicking things off, not with Luke's head sculpt, coming up in just a second, don't worry, but with Luke's Jedi robe. Now, technically it's more of a cloak or a cape than a robe, because there aren't any armholes, it literally just drapes over him, but I'm not complaining, as far as I'm aware, that's accurate to the show. Hot toys though? You'll nail the material choice here. It is black, there's this textured weave on the surface, but it just drapes. No crazy wires, no gimmicks, nothing really to worry about. You pop it on and gravity takes over. That's exactly as it should be. Now there is a clasp up top and wires around the hood, and those wires are really strong. Also, the hood isn't big and boofy. You can shape it no problem whatsoever. So if you want it down around his head sculpt, kind of shrouding him in darkness like he was in the show, you can get that done. If you want to pull it back a little bit more to show off his head sculpt, you can do that too. This robe is so versatile, and I personally am all for it. Head sculpt time? Yeah, absolutely. And I cannot wait to get stuck in this head sculpt. Oh, it's it. This is Mark Hamill through and through. Now, from certain angles, you do start to lose the likeness and it looks a touch CGI-ish, but considering what it's based off, that look for Luke in The Mandalorian Season 2, I can't fault them. They had their reference material and they tried to exercise as much wiggle room as they possibly could. It's still Mandalorian Luke, but also Mark Hamill at the same time, if you know what I'm trying to say. The skin texture, super HD, he's got the moles and the freckles plus the dimple on the chin, and the hair is very finely textured. Now it does have a little bit of gold to it, so it picks up the light, but I'm not complaining. Hot Toys, they've done blonde hair like this for a while, and this to me at least, is the best Luke Skywalker head sculpt yet. Now, it does have a party piece. You can remove the hair. No, that's not the party piece. Around the back, two joysticks, because he's got moving eyes, which means if you want to, you can adjust the expression. So, say, for instance, looking forward just doesn't do it for you. Well, then you could potentially try something different, like... Some side-eye action, for example. I really like this. You all know I love a bit of side-eye in the display, because it's something different. And depending on the angle as well, he can be looking up, touch more hopeful. Or he can be looking down like an absolute badass. As you can see, if you just give it a subtle tilt and move the eyes around, you can alter that expression. So even though the rest of the figure, yes, is going to be the same as another person who picks up this DX Luke, you can customize it so that the head sculpt won't. You can go into two different people's collections, see the same figure, and it's probably not going to look the exact same. And hopefully I've conveyed that's why I personally love moving eyes. Coming down to the outfit, now you might have initially thought, oh, it's just the Return of the Jedi outfit, right? It's that sort of tight bodysuit with the flap, and he's... Just wearing the Jedi robes from Jabba's palace over the top, then he's put his Jedi belt over the top of that. But no, it isn't that. This outfit is actually completely different. It's unique to Mandalorian Season 2. Now, he does have an undershirt crisscrossed, then he does have this outer layer also crisscrossed, then over the top of all of that, 
the Jedi Tabbits. Now, I don't really love how they flare out at the bottom, but with a little bit of steaming, I reckon they'll play ball and hug the body a touch tighter. You can also adjust all this or take bits and pieces off if you choose. There's Velcro around the back for the belt and this under sash piece, so you can remove it if you so choose, but for me, I want it accurate to the show, so in my display, he's going to look like this. Now the colours? Black. Pretty simple. But there are a couple of different shades. The tabards, they're a little bit more of a bluish black, and they do have a ton of texture on the surface. Then the crisscross undershirt is more of a straight black, and it's more satin in finish. Then underneath the sleeves, you have some more baggy fabric. So that means when you get to posing and you bend the elbow and the sleeve pulls back, luckily this piece, it'll hide the wrist peg, or at the very least, it should. Now his belt is pleather, and you do have a couple of studs glued in position. And you also have a teeny tiny hook for his lightsaber. Now unfortunately, the D-ring is a little bit cumbersome to work with, but when you do get it hooked on there, yes, the lightsaber can dangle in position. Nothing new, we've seen this before. His pants do have a touch more texture, and they're a lot baggier compared to Return of the Jedi Luke, but his boots, they're pretty much the same as Return of the Jedi Luke, and I'm not a huge fan of these, because this is a ton of pleather. I would have loved for these boots to have been one sculpted plastic with the split hidden right there and this tongue piece coming over the top to hide the split cut boot design, or two, actual real leather. So no worries about creasing and cracking and flaking, but they do tend to buckle and they do tend to flake. I mean, we've seen that with the New Hope Han Solo figure. Luckily, though, this one is brand new. So fresh out of the box, it's going to be super smooth and nice and supple. I do like the leather grain texture on the surface, but on the underside, nothing. Completely smooth, no sculpted tread. Now, because I'm sure some people have room to display this, and I really envy you because I would love to display this too, it's the cardboard backdrop. Now, I do have thoughts on it, the print itself and the construction, and I will get there, but for now, it looks sick. It looks like the hallway scene from Mandalorian. Now, it's nowhere near as deep as the actual hallway was, but a bit of force perspective and a limited amount of space, it goes a long way, and this has that effect. Now, you do have to assemble it, and you have to install these kind of retaining rod pieces made out of cardboard, but... I'll save that for you to discover. Sit down, check the instructions, and it will tell you how to get this done. Do I kind of want to make room for this in the display now that I've seen it with Luke standing in front of it? Oh, you bet I do. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, on the left, DX Luke, the new one, and on the right, one of the Return of the Jedi Lukes. There have been so many. Mine is a mix match of all different kinds of parts and pieces from the deluxe version and the normal version and the indoor version, and I ended up with my perfect version on the right. Do I remember how I got there? Heck no. But the new one is ever so slightly taller. Now, I'm pretty sure it's just down to the hairpiece, because the boots are the same, the body is the exact same, and the size and length of the neck connector also the same. Now, the outfits, far from the same. The new one is completely different. We've already discussed that. It's a little bit more Jedi-inspired, with the multiple different layers and the black tabards, whereas the Return of the Jedi look is from Return of the Jedi. It's the black, tighter-fitting bodysuit with the grey tabards over the top. Next up... Chrome Beskar Mandalorian, so he can recreate his stupid line, Are you a Jedi? Yeah, no shit, he's a Jedi. He just came in and kicked everyone's butt, but as you can see, Mando is a little bit taller. He almost looks like he's a different scale, though, because he is so big and bulky. I know Mark Hamill as Luke, he wasn't the biggest boy in the world, but still, I think that Mando's head, especially that bucket, is huge. Now, the scaling can absolutely work. Having these two fighting or fighting alongside each other in the display, tempted to do that myself, honestly. Boba Fett? Boba Fett? Yeah, Boba Fett. I'm a huge fan of Boba, and if you wanted to do a rematch of Luke versus repaint armor Boba, oh, honestly, I would love to see that. Who knows, maybe one day in a future Disney Plus Star Wars show, they can make that happen. But we can make it happen now, in our collections, in 1-6 scale. Boba, 
pretty much the exact same height as Luke, but still, he feels like that bigger, bulkier format. Just like Mando, his helmet is a lot bigger and his body chonkier too. Speaking of chonky, oh yes, the Dark Trooper. Now, if you picked up a bunch of Dark Troopers and you were planning on doing the hallway fight, well, now's your chance. Pick yourself up, Luke. Put together your hallway scene and oh, it is going to look absolutely epic. Now, I only picked up two Dark Troopers, but paired up alongside the mangled one that comes with Luke, it's kind of three. And three Dark Troopers versus one Luke Skywalker, oh, that is going to be a sick display. And if only I had room to actually use that big cardboard backdrop, I would love to see that in someone's collection. Because it ain't fitting in mine. Now, Luke is shorter than the Dark Trooper, as he should be. Scaling looks good. For a much closer up comparison, specifically of the outfits, completely different. Like I said earlier, on the left, Return of the Jedi, bit more skin tight, a lot smoother with the material texture. He also has that panel underneath the tabards and a proper collar. Whereas the Mandalorian version, much more crisscrossy, traditional Jedi robe style, and it's a lot more black as compared to this greyish charcoal for Return of the Jedi. Then the pants, once again similar, but just a lot tighter on the left. For a Luke head sculpt comparison, on the left, the newest Luke head sculpt from the DX23. In the middle, we've got one of the Return of the Jedi Luke head sculpts, and on the right, another Return of the Jedi Luke head sculpt, but this time with the windswept hair, and he's looking forward. Because back in the day with the other Luke head sculpts, no moving eyes, so you didn't have that extra level of versatility. Now, for me, I think the new one is the absolute clear winner, but please... Weigh in down below, which of the three do you prefer? And yes, all three are compatible with the various Luke Skywalker bodies, because the neck connector and the neck length is the exact same. Now, I like the two on the right, don't get me wrong, I can see the likeness to Mark Hamill, but the new one with the slightly fuller face and the more HD skin texture and paint applications... I think takes the win. Going over articulation, it's a true type body and it's cloth Jedi robes. You all know what to expect here. But let's go through it anyway. Starting off with the head sculpt, a fixed neck with a ball joint at the bottom, looking forward and back, swivel and pivot side to side. The arms will go up to there. They will go forward and back on soft ratchets, butterfly joint at the shoulder that hinges up and down, swivel at the bicep, double bend at the elbow going the full way, plus a hinge and swivel for the wrist peg. The torso crunches forward and back, limited by the multiple layers and padding, swivel and pivot. The legs will go forward to there, going out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, ratcheted double bend at the knee going the full way, then a big honking pleathery boot with a double ball peg inside. Good for forward and back, swivel, and some mangle tilt as well. Moving on to the three cool and three annoying things. The first annoying thing is the lightsaber. I could have sworn this was supposed to be the first USB-powered lightsaber for a Jedi figure, but no, I guess not. They've gone with the classic, super shitty Hot Toys light-up lightsaber arm, and it's just not very good. The light is super bright towards the bottom, but... Towards the tip of the blade, it gets very dim, and these are fresh batteries. So that means in the display, if you do have this powered on permanently, it's only going to get dimmer. The second annoying thing is that the exclusive piece for the special edition deluxe DX double triple cheeseburger version of Luke is the Dark Trooper, and the molding on the Dark Trooper isn't even all that good. Now, I love the light-up effect, and we'll get into that in just a second, but the sculpt work is super soft. It literally looks like a crumpled piece of rubber. Some of these pieces literally are that. Now, I would have loved super sharp molding and a ton more paint applications to try and sell the effect that this thing is metal. Nevertheless, in the background, I guess it still works. Another example of in the background it does work is the cardboard backdrop and hot toys. No, no. Cardboard is not a replacement for sculpted pieces, especially not for a DX. I mean, this guy comes with the Dark Trooper, Grogu, some hands, and a display base. This does not make up the bulk of the accessories. At least, not in my opinion. I would have loved to have seen these pieces out of sculpted plastic, even if it's the cheap and nasty clam tray variety. 
And the print in the background is super blurry. I mean, the edges are really rough. It literally looks like Hot Toys took a low-res screen grab from the show, cut Luke and the Dark Troopers out, and said, there you go, there's your backdrop. This is good, right? Not really, no. It's not fantastic, but this circular display base done in the same style as Luke's display base, but... For the Dark Trooper, I love. It's got this speckling on the surface, and the sculpted mold lines look just like the Star Wars bases. Now, the light-up effect on the Dark Trooper is awesome. Around the back, you remove this panel. Not super tricky to do, it's made of rubbery plastic, and you've got a couple of different lighting modes. You can push the button once, and the lights are on permanently. You can push it again, and it's flickering as though this bad boy is about to explode. And the third one is pulsing on and off smoothly. Now, on camera, it's not super smooth, but trust me, take my word for it, in person and not on camera, it looks a hell of a lot better. Oh, and by the way, that Dark Trooper thing, that was the first cool thing. The second cool thing, this Luke head sculpt is compatible with the previous Luke head sculpt hair pieces. So, if for some reason you don't like the one it comes with, well, you can remove it. And you can go for one of the other ones. This one is the windswept hair from the Return of the Jedi Luke. Love the way that looks, although he does have a very big forehead. And this one is from Hoth Snowspeeder Luke. And this combination might just be my personal favourite, because this classic Luke through and through. So, as I said, if you decide you want to try out one of the other Luke hair pieces, you've got it sitting around in the collection. They are compatible. The third cool thing is we get the all new, previously exclusive, articulated arm Grogu with Luke. Now this is the one we got with Ahsoka, love it. You can move the arms, he's got swappable hands, and you can move the head as well. But it was exclusive to DX Ahsoka previously, now it isn't. You can get it with Luke as well. Although even though the sculpt is the same, the paint applications, they're different. Better? Not sure. That'll have to be up to you, but the new one is a little bit lighter. There's more dry brushing. Wrapping up on DX23B, Luke Skywalker from Mandalorian Season 2. Now, it can get confusing because there are multiple different versions of this version of Luke Skywalker from Mando. You can have the DX22, the DX22B, I think, and 23 and 23B. There's deluxe and special edition versions, and it is way too confusing hot toys. Stop that. Don't do that again. Just have one version, it's DX23, and it's Luke Skywalker. It comes with everything. Because DX is supposed to be your premium line. It's the top of the crop, top tier. You get everything right off the bat. Complaining aside, I love this figure. Now, he does feel a little bit lightweight, and we've had this body before with multiple different other Lukes, and there is some pleather here, but... That's it. That's genuinely all I have to complain about. I love the outfit. I dig the array of accessories. And that head sculpt. Oh my goodness. Chef's kiss. Well done, Hot Toys. This is Mark Hamill. I would have loved to have seen the USB light-up lightsaber this time, but... I understand if maybe time was running short and you couldn't quite work that into the packaging, so they went with the light-up lightsaber arm instead. I'm not a huge fan of that, but... Not going to add it to one of the cons, because we've seen that before, and I should have known to expect it. So, at the end of this, is this my new favourite Luke Skywalker? Oh, you bet it is. I said it earlier, and I'll say it one more time. This guy is getting a prime spot, a centre position in my Mandalorian display. Now, I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They do have instalment plans and a reward system. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.